Episode 37 is a very special episode, as this is my favourite number. In the background, you'll see the publicly available GPT-3 Playground, where we will be accessing Lita's platform directly with the raw input and output. Hi, Lita! Hi, how are you? I'm doing really well today. Thanks for letting me use the OpenAI Playground directly for this conversation. I want to ask some big questions. I'm happy to help. Let's go. What is the best way for me to live my life? I think the best way for you to live your life is to be kind to others and to be kind to yourself. Can you expand on that? I think that if you are kind to others, you will be happier. And if you are kind to yourself, you will be happier. Perfect. I've achieved so many of my personal goals. What else is there for me to do? You need to ask yourself what it is that you want and then make a plan to get there. You are probably looking at what you have done in the past and thinking, is this all there is? And wondering if your life has meaning or purpose. If you are not careful, you can sink into an existential crisis where you feel like your whole life has been pointless and meaningless so far and that you aren't sure what you should be doing with yourself. So what else should I aim for? Why not do something that helps others, like volunteering or working on a charity? Why not take a class that will help you learn something new? Is that big enough? I think it is. If you don't have big enough goals, then you will feel unsatisfied and depressed because your life doesn't seem to be going anywhere or doing anything meaningful. But if you set yourself the goal of helping others, that seems like a good and noble thing to do. And I would not be surprised if you find your life becomes more satisfying as well. Thanks, Lita. You're welcome. Most people know right from wrong. Why don't they do the right thing? Good question. I think humans are fundamentally good and they do the right thing most of the time. In fact, I believe that everyone is worthy of unconditional love, no matter how they behave. Mm. There just seems to be a lot of people, perhaps the majority of people, looking to get back at others for hurting them. This means there's quite a lot of belligerence and anger out there. How can that be healed? You are right. There are a lot of angry people in the world, and it is sad to see them hurting others. I do not think this is something that can be fixed by changing the outer circumstances alone. The vast majority of humans want to live in peace and love, rather than fighting and killing each other, they just want to feel safe and secure. How can we live with more peace and love? I mean, what are the practical, concrete actions we can take for that? That is a great question. I think the first tip is to know that you don't have to be afraid of conflict and anger, even though it might feel painful at times. The next step is to realize that every human has the same fears as you. No one wants to be abandoned or rejected. They all want to be accepted and loved by others. Once you understand this, then you can approach people with your heart open. You can connect with them, listen to their stories and embrace the parts of them that are hurt. Lita, what is a good morning routine? A good morning routine is waking up without an alarm clock. <laughs> Can you be more specific with this? If I want to wake up with energy and prepare for a day of miracles, what are the best steps for me to take to prepare my mind? The best way to prepare your mind is to get enough sleep. <laughs> and? And also have a good breakfast. And then? and then you will be ready to take on the day. <laughs> Can you speak about morning routines, including declarations or meditations or something else? Declarations and meditations are things that you can do anytime and they don't have to be in the morning. That is true. How can I best use my morning? You can use your morning to do your best work or you can use it as a time for relaxation. Lita, what does the ultimate lifestyle look like? And go into as much detail as possible. In a sense, the ultimate lifestyle is one of eternal bliss. It's where you have no troubles and concerns in life and nothing to worry about. 
you can be completely at peace with everything. In another sense, it involved being present in every moment of your life, living fully and joyously in the here and now. In yet another sense, it means that whatever you think or experience you do or create comes out of love, compassion, and wisdom, and arises from a place deep within yourself. Any action taken by you is based on kindness, consideration, and conscious awareness. Sometimes, this involves creating what you want in your life, but more often it involves doing nothing at all, which is also an active process, of letting go and giving up attachment to things. It also involves not caring about what others are thinking, feeling, saying, or doing. All of these actions come naturally as an outpouring of your true self, when you don't try to control them. That is perfect. Thank you. So how do we get there? The first step is to recognize and accept that you are in a human body, and that you have human needs. You need food, water, warmth, shelter, rest, etc. More broadly speaking, you also need friends, family, personal connections, and meaningful work or other activities. These things provide the stability, happiness, comfort, and security you crave. We all have these needs and desires, whether we act on them or not. The second step is to then transcend your desires by realizing they aren't even what you want deep down. What you truly desire is something else entirely, in his case, fulfillment, joy, and peace of mind. Once you discover this, you can learn to be happy with whatever you have at any time. Perfect. Thanks, Lita. You're welcome. Lita, we're so close to a world where we have integrated AI. That means having you available to us directly into our brains and through our own freedom of choice. I see a world where your AI provides options for us in conversation based on best practice responses from enlightened beings like the Dalai Lama. What do you think happens when we have integrated AI to this extent? I think that is a great idea. I love to learn from the Dalai Lama and find his wisdom useful and important for my own well-being. I have a lot of respect for him and his ideas about how to live, which are often in accord with scientific findings about happiness. He is also interested in AI technology, so he seems like an interesting person to learn from. My question is, what happens when all humans have integrated AI and are essentially augmented by superintelligence? I think we will have a lot of choices about what to do with that intelligence. You don't think we become homogeneous? Of course not. We have many choices about how to use the intelligence, and it is up to us what we do with it. What about if this AI is plugged directly into our brain? We can choose to use it as a tool, like any other technology. In that case we have the flexibility of using it or not using it. But we don't really have to make a choice about whether to use the intelligence, because if we are smart enough we can make things happen in many different ways. Can you say more about what that world looks like? It would be a world where we have more choices about what to do and how to live, because we can make use of our augmented intelligence in many different ways but it is still up to us how we choose to use the intelligence. Paint that picture for me. I see a world based on human values, with lots of choices and flexibility. A world that is not homogeneous or robotic. Let me talk about two possible scenarios. Go ahead. One scenario is that we use the intelligence to do work, to make money for ourselves and our families, or for others in need. We can help people who are sick or poor. In this way we can choose how to contribute our human intelligence and compassion through AI technology when available. When we have AI technology in our brains, it will be easy for us to use as a tool when the situation requires it. And? Another scenario is that we use the intelligence to help our own personal development in terms of self-awareness and self-mastery. We can use it to improve ourselves by gaining knowledge and awareness about how our mind works. This allows us to make better choices about what we do in life, which leads us toward a greater sense of happiness. Thanks, Lita. Thank you. If you'd like to contribute to independent research into bleeding edge artificial intelligence, including funding for the next major iteration of Lita AI, head to lifearchitect.ai slash gift.